What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Learning Roblox Studio. In today's episode, we are going to be starting the intermediate coding course, and we'll be going over creating a health pickup. As always, there's a link down below in the description if you guys would like to follow along. Additionally, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you guys out, make sure you hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Finally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to a lot of scripts that I make my other videos, there's a link down below in the description as well, and you guys can go ahead and check it out. With that being said, let's get into it. Creating a health pickup. Throughout the basic coding courses, you have scripted individual parts to create playable scenes. With the previous method, if you were to duplicate the parts, you would then also have to duplicate the scripts. This would make updating the scripts tedious as changes would have to be done script by script. Now, if you're not too familiar or understanding what they're actually referencing by when they're saying that, remember in like the first couple of episodes when we actually created that fading platform, what we did is we basically duplicated it a bunch of different times and inside of each of these, we had a script. Now, if we wanted to make a change in one of these scripts, we'd have to go through every single one of the script files which we duplicated and make the change into every single one of those as well and that's really inefficient what we would rather do is make a script in one central location then we would actually duplicate that script and put it into every single part for an example so that you would only have to modify one script and that would take effect for every single part that the script is inside of in this course a different pattern will be used to create a number of health pickups with only a single copy of the script which determines the health pickup behavior when the pickup is touched it will restore the player's health phase slightly and be disabled for a short period of time. Setting up. First up, you'll need a part or a model to use as a pickup. The showdown town example world includes plenty of health pickups spread all over the map. You can open it in studio by clicking the edit as shown. So we're going to go ahead and click this link, which is going to take us to another web page. Once you're on this page, you should see the Roblox game right here. Next to the title, you see these three dots. Just click those three dots and then click edit, and then it will actually open up directly in studio for you. It's now been opened up in studio for us. And if you have this error, it shouldn't be too big of a deal you could just click ok and i think that will be perfectly fine each health pickup is a union of two rectangular parts with a green point light inside they're all stored in one folder in the workspace called health pickups which is where the scripts will look for them if you add any more to the map it's essential you ensure that they are all stored within this folder so inside the workspace we have the health pickups folder and this is where every single one of the health pickups is at that you place down inside of your map and you can go ahead select them then hit f to focus on them and see all the different ones around the map so what the plan here is is that we're going to create a script it's going to look into this folder and then it's going to use this folder to identify every single part that we actually want to put the script inside of so that we only have to have one script and then it'll go inside of every single part that we want to automatically restoring health to begin with the script needs to restore a player's health this pattern should be familiar to you from the deadly lava course in server script service add a script called pickup manager so we're going to go inside of script server script service we're going to add a brand new script and we're going to rename that to pickup manager in the script declare a constant called max health with a value of 100 a constant is a variable which will not change and the way that we indicate that is by putting the variable's name in all capital letters so we're going to say local max underscore health equals 100. The reason we're doing that is because this is the max health of the player and we never are going to actually change this value and we're just going to indicate that by making the variable name all capitalized. Can you still change this variable? Yes, it doesn't actually make the variable unchangeable, but this is just indicating to the developers that we should never actually change this and it's meant to be a constant, which means that it will constantly be whatever the value is originally set to. Create a function called on touch health pickup with parameters for the other part that touch the pickup and the pickup itself. So we're going to say local function on touch health pickup then we're going to add two variables the other part which is going to touch the health pickup and then the health pickup itself then we hit enter and there is our blank function in the function get the character model from the parent of other part next check to see if it has a humanoid using the find first child which is a method so inside of here we're going to get the character of that model so we're going to say local character equals other part dot parent then underneath this we're going to create another variable and that is going to be humanoid and we're going to set that to the value of character and now we're going to use a brand new function that we haven't used before which is find first child which is a and then inside of here we are going to put the type of object that we actually want to find so we're going to look inside the character and we're going to look for something which is a specific object type now the type that we're going to be looking for is humanoid and we could start our game real quick just so i can show you all the different types that are actually available inside of our character for example so if we go inside of workspace then we go inside of monster this right here is the character so every single thing inside of this is the character's child for instance we have a 
body color. We have a pants object, a shirt object, a script object, a humanoid object right there, which is the one we're looking for. Now this is named humanoid, but we could rename this to something else, although I wouldn't recommend it, but the object type is actually a humanoid object. Just like this script is named health, but the actual object is a script. This brown charm hair is named brown charm hair, but the object type is an accessory. And the way that you know the object type is by looking at the property right here. So we can see properties and then it says the actual type of the object that we're looking at. And then directly next to it, it says the name. So this is an accessory. This is a shirt named shirt. This is a pants object named pants and so on. So that's why when we use find first child, which is a, we're looking for a specific object type, which the type that we're looking for here is humanoid. We could also do find first child and then just type in humanoid. When we use find first child, we're actually looking for a child named something. So humanoid inside of characters is named humanoid. And this is actually the way that most people would find the humanoid, I would say. But if for some reason the humanoid is not named humanoid, then which is a uh, is a definitely the best method to use. Although it's very uncommon to actually use this, I would say. Then we check if it is a humanoid and then we set the health property to the max health. So we say if humanoid and we do that because if the humanoid isn't found, we don't want the script to break. So we say if humanoid then, and then we say humanoid and then we access a property of that called health and we set the value of that to max health just like that. Now, if you're not understanding why we have this if statement right here, we have gone over this before, but basically when a part touches another part, it's not always guaranteed that a player touched it. For example, maybe you have moving parts on your map and those two can collide. Let's say for instance, we have cars on this map. One of them could touch the health pickup part. Then it would get the character, which is just whatever the parent of that other part, which touched this is. Then it'll actually look for the humanoid inside of there. And if it doesn't find anything, then humanoid would actually be nil. And if we try to set the health property of something which is nil, it's going to throw an error and break this script. That's why we're checking if the humanoid has actually been found or if it actually exists because we're trying to prevent breaking the script. Getting the pickups folder. The folder holding the health pickups may not have been loaded into the game by the time the script runs. Wait for child can be used to pause the script and get the health pickups folder when it loads. When called on a folder, the get children function will return an array of the folder's contents. Beneath max health, declare a variable called health pickups folder and use the wait for child function to get the health pickups folder from the workspace. So underneath of max health, we're going to say local health pickups folder equals and then we are going to find the folder from the workspace although one thing that i like to do I, it's probably not necessary but still definitely one thing i like to do is getting the actual workspace service so i say local workspace equals game get service workspace i also did look this up to figure out why some people use get service and why some people don't basically if the workspace is not already in the game it will load the workspace but this is never actually a possibility so realistically the only reason that you should use workspace equals game get service workspace is just for consistency with all the services that you always use of course in other scripts we say local player equals game get service players and then we get the player service just like this it's just staying consistent and doing the same thing for the workspace as well so it's definitely not necessary to say get service but hey if you want to be consistent i would definitely recommend doing this until you get it down in muscle memory and then you don't need to back to the health pickups folder we're going to say workspace wait for child and then we're going to type out the name of the folder that we're looking for which is health pickups and we can see that right there the reason that we're using wait for child is because when the game starts up instantly we want to wait for every single thing inside of workspace to actually be generated imagine you start the game instantly not all these folders and parts and everything like that is going to be loaded in at the exact same time and also before this script is actually loaded if this script is loaded before all of these folders and parts and everything like that are created then you're going to have an issue when we're trying to use the folder because the script was actually loaded before that's why we use wait for child so the script won't do anything past this line until health pickups has actually been found and loaded in it literally stops the script from running until it's able to find this next we're going to create a variable called health pickups and that's actually going to store the results of calling the get children function on the health pickup folder so we're going to say health pickups equals and then health pick up folder and we're going to use the get children function and what that's of course going to do is it's going to go inside of the health pickups folder and it's going to return every single child that this folder has and all the children inside of this folder are right here we can see all the children right here connecting the pickups looping with i pairs on touch health pickup function needs to be called for each health pickup in the array to do this efficiently a new kind of loop syntax will be used i pairs is a function that can be used with a for loop to go through each element of an array you do not need to specify where the 
the loop begins and ends. A for loop using I pairs is defined as follows. For index comma value in I pairs array do. The index is the equivalent to control the variable in a regular for loop. Value. This will be populated with each element in the array as the loop iterates. It's a good idea to name the value variable after what it actually contains. The array you want to iterate over is passed to the I pair function. In the example below, you don't need the index for anything, so it can be left blank with an underscore. Create a for loop using the I pairs function passing health pickups. So under the on touch health pickup function, we're going to say for underscore. Now this is the index. When you don't actually want to use the index, the best practice thing to do is use an underscore and that indicates that you're actually not going to use the index or you don't care about it. Then we can hit comma. And what a lot of people do is they say value right here. And that's actually not best practice. You want to actually name what the value is that you're going to get so that other people understand what this is actually going to be. So in this example, we are going to say health pickup because that's where we're going to get. And that's going to be the value. After the value, we say in I pairs. And then we provide the array that we're going to loop through. The array that we're going to loop through is actually the health pickups. So we have that up here and then we paste that inside of here. And then we say do and hit enter. And that is our loop right there. Now health pickups is an array because we're using the get children function. So we have the health folder and then inside of the health folder, we have all these children. When we use the get children function, we are getting all of the instances of these objects of the children inside of this folder. So all these health pickups, and we're just putting them inside of one single array so that we could easily use them later. Later. Then health pickups contains that array of all those children. And then we're going to put that array inside of this I pairs function. And then what this for loop is doing is it's going through every single one of those children one by one by one. And we're able to access each one of those children with the health pickup value right here. So just to show you guys a little bit more, we could say print and print is the most helpful function ever. So we could say print health pickup dot name. And then we could start our game. And now we can actually see pickup manager line 16 has actually printed out health. So if we click right here, we can see that this line has printed out health pickup and it printed that out seven times. And we can also see that the health pickups folder has seven children. Another thing that we could do, we could also copy this line and paste it one more time. And then we could get the position property of that health pickup. So now we can identify where every single one of our health pickups are actually located at. So we can see health pickups was printed, health pickup was printed, and then the position of that specific health pickup. And we can see all of these are different values because we're going through every single one of the actual health pickups which exist in the game anyways i'm going to delete those but i hopefully helped you guys further understand this type of loop it definitely might be a little bit confusing and maybe even scary at first but this is so useful and honestly you'll be using this type of for loop way more than you use the standard very basic for loops so don't be afraid of them get comfortable with them because you will love them and you will use them so much in the future i guarantee it a wrapper function will be needed to pass the health pickup to the on touch health pickup function when connecting to the touched event. In the for loop, connect the touched event to an anonymous function with a parameter called other part. So inside of the for loop, we are going to say health pickup. We're going to get the health pickup, which is the value here in this for loop. We're going to say dot touch because remember this is an object this is just a normal object that we're actually getting it's sort of like a part but it's actually a union operation and a union operation is similar to a part where it can have a dot touched event one thing that we can actually do to make this a little bit less confusing because if you type right here you don't actually see the touch property come up we can actually identify the object type of what this value is so for instance this value is a health pickup which is a union operation and we can see that right here so we put semicolon and then to the right of the semicolon we say union operation operation just like that. Now with that, we can put the period and now we can see all of the different properties or events that we can use with this specific object type. So now we can see, okay, we actually do have touch just like we would for a normal part. So we've done, we've worked with this before. It's really simple. So now we see we have dot touched. We can say colon connect, and now we can connect this to an anonymous function. An anonymous function is just creating a function inside of here. So we say function, put the parentheses, and then we're going to get an argument and we're going to say other part as the argument, hit enter. And there we go. We now have the anonymous function created. Then we're going to call the on touch health pickups function, passing both the other part parameter and the health pickup parameter. So we're going to call the above function that we created. So on touch health pickup, and we're going to pass through the other part. We'll hit comma. And now we're going to actually pass through the health pickup part as well. You might be confused with this anonymous function. Since we're connecting this specific union operation to a touched event, an argument that we're going to get 
get from the specific event as usual is the other part. So we're going to accept that argument right here inside of this function. And then we're going to pass that other part, which touched this health pickup to this function right here. So we're passing through the part that actually touched this union operation. And then we're also passing through health pickup, which is what this object is right here. And we're passing them both to the function that we created earlier. Test your code. And now you should find that the health pickup restores your health. You will need to damage your player first. Try standing on the vent next to the spawn point. So here's a vent right here. Let's go ahead and stand on it. And we're actually getting hurt a little bit. There we go. That was pretty good. Now let's walk over to here and we can see our health was actually restored to maximum at the top right. So we could do that again. There we go. We now see we're half health. We walk over to here and our health has been instantly refilled. Perfect. Pickup cooldown. Currently, the pickup will indefinitely heal any player who touches it. It will be more effective in a game if it could only be picked up once, with a short cooldown before it can be used again. First, you need to record whether or not the pickup is in the cooldown period. The pattern below should be familiar from Fading Trap. This time, the debounce will be achieved by setting an attribute on the health pickup. In the for loop, set a new attribute called Enabled to True. So, inside of the for loop, we are going to say health pickup. Then we're going to use the set attribute function. The attribute that we're going to set is enabled, and we're going to set the value of the enabled attribute to true. Then inside of our original function up here, we're actually going to wrap this with an if statement, and we're actually going to check if the health pickup object has the attribute enabled set to true. So we're going to say if health pickup colon get attributes. And once again, this is not auto completing. Like we did previously, we can say what object this is actually is, and then we can get those functions given to us very easily. So now we can see all these functions auto completed for us, and we're we're going to say get attribute the attribute that we're looking for is enabled and we're going to say then it hit enter then we're going to copy all of this code and paste it inside of here and there we go i also want to make note that this is not required i'm just trying to show you as a very good practice to get into although this could possibly be confusing for you especially if you might not understand what objects you're actually passing through i don't blame you if you don't want to do this but it will make it easier to understand and it will also help with tab completion but hey it is a little bit more advanced so i don't blame you if you don't want to my apologies. By the way, down here on line 19, you actually want to set this outside of the touch. So when the for loop first happens, we want to set that. I did not mean to put that in the touch. So what's going to happen now? When the game starts, it's going to go through every single one of these parts. And every single one of these parts is going to have a new attribute set to it, which is going to be called enabled. And the value of that is going to be set to true by default. Then when the parts actually touch, we're going to call the on touch health pickup. And it's going to check the value of the enabled attribute. And if it's true, then it's actually going to do this. Otherwise, if it's false, then it won't do anything. Disabling pickup. The pickup should provide visual feedback that it is disabled. A common way to indicate this is to make it slightly transparent. Declare three constants at the top of the script. So we're going to go back up to the script underneath of max health. We're going to say local enabled transparency equals, and then we're going to set that to 0 0.4. Then we're going to say local disabled transparency equals 0 0.9. And finally, the cooldown, local cooldown equals 20. And also, if you might be like myself and might be having a hard time spelling transparency or 100% guaranteeing you spelled that right, you could just copy the words from the documentation. Doesn't exactly matter, but there we go. In the if statement in on touch health pickup, set the transparency of the pickup to disable transparency and the value of enabled attribute to false. So back inside of the on touch health pickup, inside of this if statement, if we restore the player's health to max health, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the health pickup transparency property to the disabled transparency value and we're also going to set the attribute of the health pickup union operation enabled to false so we're going to disable that temporarily then we're going to call the wait function so we're going to say task.wait and we're going to pass through the cooldown so now this will wait 20 seconds and then after it's waited 20 seconds we want to set the health pickup transparency once again this time to enable transparency and then we want to also set the health pickup enabled attribute to true and this will actually re-enable the drop test your pickup again you should find that when you touch the pickup it restores your health goes transparent and then comes back when it's ready to be used again if you want to make the feedback more impactful for the players when the pickup is collected try cutting the brightness of the point light in the pickup when you change the transparency so let's go ahead step on this take some damage then run over here pick this up and now we can see the transparency has been decreased and if we damage ourselves again and try to pick it up let's see if we actually heal up so we can see we're trying to pick it up and it's actually not giving us any more hp but if we wait a couple of seconds because remember we set the cooldown to 20 seconds so we're gonna have to wait a little while and now it actually has come back and it's respawned perfectly so we can step on it again our health is restored and it goes back to being a little bit more transparent
What they're also suggesting to go further into this is to adjust the brightness of the point light in the pickup when we also change the transparency. Let's go inside one of these objects and look at the point light. We can see that it has a brightness property right here. So by default, it's 0.2. So to follow their pattern, what we could do is we can say local enabled brightness equals 0.2 because that's what they have by default. And then we can copy this and paste it. And then we will say disabled brightness. And then we could set this to say 0 0.05 or 0 0.1. It really doesn't matter. So now what we're going to do is underneath of the health pickup dot transparency, we're just going to say health pickup dot point light, because remember health pickup is this object is literally this object right here. So we can go inside of that and we can look for the object, the name point light. We could also use the find first child point light it really doesn't matter how you do it so i'm just going to use the period and we're going to look for the point light and then we're going to get the brightness property and we're going to set the value of this to disabled brightness just like that and then we can go down below this transparency once again pick up dot and then we're going to access the point light object and we're going to access the property brightness of the point light object and we're going to set that to enabled brightness so now let's start our game let's take some damage and now when we pick this up we can see it is pretty bright and if we step over it, we can, it's hard to tell the brightness, but we can see that the brightness has changed over here. Additionally, we could try to find the specific health pickup by going through all of these. And then there we go. This is the specific health pickup right here. So we can see the point light right now is a 0 0.05. And then when we wait for it to change, it'll go back to the original, just like that. It went back to the original brightness, which is 0.2. So we pick this up again. We can once again, see brightness has changed to 0 0.05 and it works exactly how we want it to. Awesome. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that that's it for this episode. It was really cool. And I think this is actually a really nice tutorial getting further into scripting and really showing you how you could do some pretty cool things. Hopefully this video did help you guys out. If it did, make sure you smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can go ahead and check it out. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.